Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I'm standing in the backyard of my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden. We're on the east side of the garden next to my woodshed. And today I wanna to talk about a tree growing in this little guild behind me. Now in permaculture, guilds are a companion planting system. I have loads of videos on fruit guilds, by the way. They're a companion planting system where we have a main focal tree, usually a fruit tree, but it can also be a nut tree like the one behind me. And we surround that tree by support species, species that grow well intermingled with the main focal tree, but also add extra benefits, not only for us as the gardener, but also for the tree itself. So today I want to talk about the tree behind me, which is the hazel, because it's a tree that has been grown since antiquity for many different purposes. I have a video on how we coppice our hazelwood for firewood. Hazel makes fantastic firewood and sustainably produced firewood because you can coppice it and basically make the tree immortal and get a sustainable, consistent harvest of firewood out of it. Also makes excellent charcoal. But obviously hazel is a food producing plant and it's one that I wish was grown more. And I love seeing in regenerative ag circles and permaculture circles when folks are talking up this tree. It's a tree that can be produced in a uh, agricultural setting, not only sustainably, but also potentially regeneratively. It's a added value to the landscape and also an added value to the pocketbook of the farmer. But for those of us that have home scale permaculture, a hazel tree is just as important. Now I only have a quarter acre here. I don't have very much space. And so on my small property, I don't have room for a really substantial nut tree because most nut trees are so large and have a really big expansive canopy and just provide too much shade. In the front of our uh, property, there's too much with like power lines coming in. I couldn't grow a large tree. Yes, in Portland, we don't bury our electric lines. When I moved out here uh, from the Midwest, I was surprised to find the messiness of all of the uh, electric and telephone poles everywhere. <sighs> Let's let my neighbor's car go by. So I just don't have room for a big nut tree. Now my next door neighbor and my dad both have volunteer walnuts. So I'm always stocked on walnuts for our pantry, but um, those are more what you would consider forage walnuts. I don't have room to grow a walnut tree here, but I have room to grow a hazel. A hazel is a diminutive little tree. It can be grown as a shrub. As I said, I grow it as a multi-trunked shrub so I can harvest it for the firewood and you can keep it pretty darn small, under 20 feet easily. And it produces a substantial quantity of nuts. While some areas can have issues with filbert worm, I have not found that to be a problem for me here, perhaps because I have such a great population of kind of predator species of that pest. And so it's not, it's not been a problem for me. I struggle with competition from squirrels. If I were more intentional about getting a large harvest of hazel nuts every year, I would net my tree and that would fix the problem with all the urban squirrels here. But I'm content to get what I can get and share with the squirrels in my neighborhood. So the reason that I'm talking about a hazel tree in early February is because it's blooming now. Hazels bloom so early and their system of flowering is different than our typical fruit trees. They produce what are called catkins and I want to show those to you today because they're in full peak bloom. Now catkins on hazels can cause a lot of allergy issues for certain people. I know one of my kids is very allergic and when this tree um, was maybe a little younger and my kid was a little younger, she used to like to climb up into it and then wondered why she'd have asthma problems afterward. So just be aware if you are somebody who has uh, outdoor allergy issues, pollen allergy issues, and you're wondering like, why are my allergies so bad in February? It may be hazel pollen, especially on a dry windy day. So hazels are wind pollinated. They produce a male and a female flower, both on the same tree. So it's a little bit confusing. The long catkin part that dangles, that produces all the pollen, that's the male part of the flower. And the female part of the flower is really diminutive up at the very top of the catkin. And I'll show you in just a second. It's really important to understand that our hazels are wind pollinated and it's appropriate for them to be flowering this time of year because they have a long, um, 
period of time, many days for the nuts to ripen. They need that long span of time for the maturation of the nuts. So when you're growing your hazels, it's important to realize how you're pruning them so you don't prune away all of the wood that will be uh, creating catkins in late winter. The catkins start to be produced in November and December and they're very green and tight and they elongate over the winter and finally open up in late January and early February. So I love looking out my window in the winter and seeing this tree just be decked in catkins. It's such a gorgeous display of all these pendulous flowers. It's like looking at a chandelier that nature made. It's so beautiful. And as the winter goes on, the catkins start out looking really tightly formed like these guys here. And then in late January and early February, they start to become more pendulous, stretch out and open up. And these are the pollen producing male flowers. Each catkin can have 20 dozen little tiny flowers on it. And then up at the very top of the catkin, which there's still buds and they're not quite opened yet, those are the female flowers. Female at the top and then male cascading down below. And if you come out here on a dry day when these males are being blown in the breeze, you can see just like the clouds of yellow pollen coming off. Sometimes in, on dry days, Oregonians wonder why their windshields are covered in pollen so early in the year. It's hazels, y'all. They are really gonna be going full blast here throughout the month of February. In general, I just really love having a hazel tree. It's such a beautiful and productive tree. It provides the shade for my ducks and chickens over here. Also for me, you can see I have little logs I like to sit on when I come out here. Shade, firewood, wood for stakes. It makes nice, long, straight stakes for walking sticks and to use in the garden. And then also, high fat, high protein nut source, sustainably produced without irrigation. But gosh, you know, I always talk about how you cannot undervalue the aesthetic component of the plants in your landscape. You can't undervalue what it brings to your personal fulfillment and enjoyment, what it brings to um, your need for beauty when you're designing in your permaculture garden. We wanna have function, but we also wanna have form and beauty as well. They're not divorced from each other. So unlike almond trees, which require forced pollination by honeybees that don't particularly like to feed from them, unlike almond trees, which require a tremendous amount of uh, watering irrigation, hazels grow without any additional water. I've never watered this tree and they don't require the forced pollination by our honeybees. They're a really sustainable alternative to all of the almonds that have become so popular due to very careful advertising by, you know, almond lobbying groups, almond farmers associations. Folks are in regenerative circles more and more pushing hazelnuts. So out here in the Pacific Northwest, we all eat hazels a lot. At least I do. They're a staple of my diet because they're produced locally. You can get them sustainably grown. It supports local farmers. Oregonians are the largest producer of hazelnuts in the United States but it doesn't mean you can't grow them elsewhere. They grow very well in the Midwest. And again, with very little irrigation and very little maintenance, they're just such a great alternative. And because there's not this like robust lobby for hazelnut farmers, they haven't been promoted so much. It's really interesting to me to think about how influenced we are by advertising. Almonds are viewed as such a healthy nut and it's only because of you know, lobbying for us to think about them that way. And the more folks come to realize that almonds are really pretty 
ecologically devastating, pretty environmentally unsustainable that we're starting to realize almonds aren't really the solution that we were hoping for, for kind of like a, a fat and protein source for the American diet. But I wish we would consider hazels a little bit more. There are a number of regenerative farmers that are really trying to push them. It's just a matter of of advertising, unfortunately. And so that's again, another reason I wanna support local food economies. I look at what my local farmers are successfully and sustainably growing and saying, how can I integrate those foods into my diet? And if you're in the Pacific Northwest or wherever you are, if there are local hazel producers, maybe you can think if you don't have room for a hazelnut on your landscape, um, in your backyard garden, maybe there are ways you could think about incorporating hazelnuts into your diet so that you can support local farmers and purchase from them. Some easy examples are swapping out in my granola. I don't use almonds, I use chopped hazelnuts. I don't make pecan pie anymore. At the holidays, I make hazelnut pie. Really easy to kind of swap out those nuts. Hazelnuts have such a mild flavor. They're not bitter and um, they're really, really versatile for cooking. So speaking of baking, I have a cake in the oven that I need to go get out. It's a oatmeal snack cake that I'm making for my kids. So I'm gonna wrap up here. If you are interested in supporting this channel, you can check out my Patreon and my PayPal in the description. If you have ideas for things you want me to cover in my Zone 8B permaculture garden or topics of social permaculture you'd like me to touch on in 2022, please let me know in the comments. I would appreciate that greatly. I hope you all are staying well and safe and I'll be back very soon. Thanks. <laughs>